Hello, in this demonstration, I'm going to walk you through how to prepare a master budget in Excel, and we're going to do the sales budget. In subsequent demonstrations, I'll walk you through how to prepare the other aspects of the master budget. Before you can begin a master budget, you must collect your data and assumptions and put them into Excel. In this worksheet, the data and assumptions are in the first columns. Uh, in the, within the green. We start off with the balance sheet at the end of 2009. We're going to be preparing the master budget for Fintorn Corporation for the first quarter of 2010, which will include January, February, and March. <clears throat> in order to do that, we will have to have beginning balances for cash, accounts receivable, and inventories, along with property, plant, and equipment, accounts payable, common stock and retained earnings. Now, in order to start the new year, you're going to need some direct materials so that you can continue with production. So the direct materials that you have available at the beginning of the year are right here. And you have 1,908 pounds of direct material available. You also have finished goods, and the finished goods are 1,200, so that you can begin sales in January. Now, after the balance sheet, we then have our sales assumptions. Now, sales assumptions are important because the sales are what drive the rest of our master budget. And then you have uh, the units that we plan on selling, and the selling price for the whole quarter is going to be $30 per unit. Then we have our inventory and production assumptions. Now with our inventory and production assumptions, we need to decide how much finished goods do we want to have at the end of each month so that we have goods available in the following month for sales. Also, how much direct materials ending inventory do we want to have so that we're ready to start production at the beginning of next month. So our assumptions for Findhorn is that 60% of next month's sales is going to be available at the end of the prior month, and that 90% of next month's production needs for direct materials will be available. The direct material unit price is $2, I mean, sorry, the direct materials that we use per unit is two pounds, and the cost is $1.40 per pound. We estimate that it's going to take 1.5 hours to produce the uh, unit, and that we're going to pay our employees $12 per hour. Then we have our overhead assumptions, selling and admin assumptions, cash receipts assumptions. Now these are important because this is saying, when are we actually going to collect the cash for these sales? And our assumption is that 40% of sales will be collected in the month of sale and 60% in the month after. Now you may realize that we're not putting anything in here for uncollectible accounts. If we wanted to have some uh, uh, uncollectible account or allowance for doubtful accounts, then we would change the 60%, for example, to 58%, meaning that 2% would be in our allowance for doubtful accounts. But for this example, we're going to assume that we collect all of our sales. And then we have our cash disbursement assumptions, which say that 30% of our purchases of direct material, and only our direct material is going into accounts payable, will be collected in the month of purchase and 70% in the month after. And our last assumption is capital acquisition. This is, are we going to purchase any property, plant, and equipment during this quarter? And we are going to purchase $20,000 worth of equipment in April 2010. So let's get started. And the first place to start will be in our sales budget. Now, to start the sales budget, we're going to need our forecasted units. Remember, so that this is a dynamic budget, constantly changing as the assumptions change, we must use cell references. So we type in equals, and we're going to go over to where our sales assumptions were. And January sales are expected to be 2,000 units. And then we're going to put in February sales, which are expected to be... 2,400 units, 
And then we're going to put in March's sales, which are expected to be 2,400. Oops, February I put in wrong. So we'll get that fixed. And we're going to need April's because remember, we're always projecting ahead. So when we do March's production, we're going to need April sales. So we're going to stick April sales out to the side. Okay. Now the next thing we need is the unit selling price. Now this is where an important tool is going to come into use and that is absolute cell referencing. And a quick way to do absolute cell referencing is by using the F4 key. So take a minute and find the F4 key on your keyboard. It's right above the number 5. Now we're going to do equals and we're going to pick up our selling price which is the $30. But that's not going to change. That's going to stay the same for this whole budget. So therefore, if you look up here, you'll see in the equation area that we have C29. If I hit F4, I now have put dollar signs around that C29. And what that says is that I want you always to go back to C29. It doesn't matter where I copy this equation, you're always going to go back and look to C29, which is what we want to happen. Now watch what happens if I hit F4 again. Notice the dollar sign before the C went away. This is saying I always want you to go to row 29, but you might go from C to D to E to F. Now if I hit it again, it puts the dollar sign before for the C. This says I want you to always go to C, but you can change the row. So you may find in other things that you're doing in Excel that you want to just have a part of your equation absolute. So I'm going to hit F4 again, all gone, F4 one more time, and I've got my dollar signs back. So I'm going to hit enter, and that's going to stay the same across. But so is my budgeted revenue. My budgeted revenue is going to be equals 2,000 times the $30. Hit enter. And now these two can be copied across. Now to get the quarter, we're going to do auto sum and we're going to sum our three months. But we don't want to sum the sales price. We just want it to be the $30. And then we're going to, we can calculate the total sales times the $30. And then what I like to do off to the side is a check figure. Now I calculated 198 by taking 6,600 times 30. My check figure is an auto sum where I just sum the three months. I should get the same number. And the last thing I like to do in the sales budget before we leave it is to determine how much is going to be in my accounts receivable. This is the amount that I've not collected for the quarter. And that is going to be the March sales times, and we're going to go over to our assumptions and down to our cash receipts assumptions. And it's the month after that I haven't collected. So my accounts receivable at the end is going to be 43200 And I'm going to need that when I do my balance sheet. In the next demonstration, I'll go through the production budget and the direct materials purchases budget. I hope this demonstration has been helpful.